So, welcome back to some more Kill Team. Uh, for this one, we're going to be playing on the True Hawk board. We're going to be matching up the Thousand Suns versus the Grey Knights. Classic Battle of the Psychers matchup going on here. Uh, so, for this one, what's happened is the Thousand Suns have intercepted a shuttle bound for one of the black ships. Within it are four stasis crypts of highly viable Psychers that they want to capture and drag away. The Grey Knights, of course, intercepted them after they learned of their plans and attempted to stop them. So we'll dive into the mission details a little bit later, but first, let's have a look at the teams. So here we have 125 points exactly of Thousand Suns. Uh, leading the group as the commander is a Zangor Shaman. Uh, he's got the Cybalt and Gaze of Fate uh, psychic powers, and he is a Psyker Specialist, so adding ones to psychic tests. Leading the group is a Twistberate with Zangor Blades. Uh, the Aspiring Sorcerer is a Combat Specialist with his Inferno Bolt Pistol and Staff. Next to him is a Demolitions Rubric Marine with a Warp Flamer. On the end is a Veteran Rubric with Warp Flamer. And then we just have one more Rubric on his own again with a Warp Flamer. So 125 points of Thousand Suns exactly. And here we have 122 points worth of Grey Knights. Leading the Strike Team is Judge Judy. CR, who has the Nemesis Force Sword, he's the lead specialist. Down here we have a level 2 combat specialist with the Nemesis Demon Hammer, so he's hitting that a little bit better. Next to him is a Demolitions Grey Knight Gunner with an Incinerator. On the end, another Grey Knight Gunner, heavy with a side cannon. And then two more non-specialist Grey Knights with Nemesis Warding Staffs. And that is 122 points worth of Grey Knights. So, for this mission we're going to be playing the matched play mission Heist. Uh, for this one, there are two deployment zones. On one side is the yellow and more red room over there. And on the other side is the yellow, the green, and this little chamber here. So slightly bit further on there. So the objective of this mission is that there are four crates that we're going to take in turns to place on the board. And they have to be more than five inches away from the deployment zones and each other. Uh, at the end of the game, each objective marker is worth three points to whoever controls it. But if that objective marker is in a player's deployment zone at the end of the game, then that player controls it, irrespective of if there's enemy models nearby. So you need to get it and drag it back to your deployment zone. Uh, player with the most victory points is the winner. So uh, it will also, at the end of round four, carry on for random game length. So roll the d6 and all three up it continues, and then four up for the next turn, so on, so on. So uh, you can begin, if you start your movement phase within one inch of a storage chest, you can then drag it as part of this. You can't run up and then move back in the same turn. It has to start next to it, and you can't run. It's just the full move of up to six inches, if that's what your guy can do. Okay, so let's uh, deploy the chests and deploy the teams. Okay, so rolling off for whoever deploys the chests. Uh, so whoever wins the roll off gets to deploy their chest first, but the opponent will get to deploy their first model first. So rolling off. That's five for the uh, Thousand Suns and nine for the Grey Knights. So Grey Knights get to deploy their first chest. Then the Thousand Suns get their first model for deployment after the chests are deployed. So after deployment then, uh, all objectives and teams are on the board. We have one, two stasis crypts on the bridge and one, two in the cargo hold. Uh, for the Thousand Suns, we've got the uh, Zangor Shaman and the regular Rubik with the Warp Flamer up on the top side near the bridge. We've got the Veteran and the Demolition Specialist down near the hallway, and we've got the Aspiring Sorcerer and the Twist Bay uh, ready for the cargo hold. On the opposite side, the Grey Knights have got the Hammer, the Incinerator, and one of the Warden Staffs ready to go down the corridor, and everybody else raring and ready to go into the cargo hold. So, let's roll 2d6 for initiative then, on turn 1. Thousand Suns get 10, 9 for the Grey Knights, initiative to Thousand Suns. So, end of Thousand Suns movement at the start of turn 1. First off, the veteran paid a CP to make a move before the game began, opened the door, moved up, then he's advanced into that position and is sitting pretty on that door, waiting for the Grey Knights to open and try and get past him. Uh, the Twist Ray has moved up, removed the door, and is sitting on that crate over there. The Aspiring Sorcerer advanced, but it didn't get very far, and so it's hidden behind the pipe. Up over here, the Shaman moved 12 inches base and removed both doors on the way and is sitting behind that Stasis Crypt. The regular Rubric advanced and is sitting on the other, and the Demolitions has just walked up and took covering position on that door there. So into Grey Knight movement. So in the Grey Knight's turn, the Warning Staff is making a charge against the Rubric with the Warp Flamer. Uh, thanks to prior Nexus rules, we are rolling 2d6, pick the highest for the Overwatch with the Warp Flamer. 
Ooh, two either way. So two hits, strength four, toughness four, wounds on fours. A single at an AP of minus two. So a five upon save for the warding staff, please. Oh, makes it, makes it, makes it. Makes his charge attempt. Well, Even Snake Eyes would do it. Yeah, oh, he's in. Geez. All the way around. In he goes. Hammer Boy's gonna go in. Yep, charging in as well. Easy. In he goes. So the other Grey Knight with the Warding Staff is charging into the Aspiring Sorcerer with the Inferno Bolt Pistol. So one overwatch shot, hits on a six. Ooh! Hits. Strength four, toughest four, wins on a four. No. Make a charge. Not enough. So, movement for the Grey Knights then. Uh, this rubric has just been completely mobbed by uh, one of the guys with the Warding Staffs and the combat with the Hammer. Uh, the incinerator couldn't move past because he had to move to open the door to let the others charge. As for the rest of them, uh, the leader has advanced to contest that objective against the twist brain, whereas the other two have taken up positions next to the crate and behind the pipe. So, going into the best thing for these two teams, the psychic phase. Okay then, so psychic fun times, what both of these factions like. So, Thousand Suns Initiative, I'm going to start with the aspiring sorcerer up there, and he is going to attempt to cybolt directly into the enemy leader. Cybot has a warp charge value of five. Goes off with nine. Let's deny the witch. Attempting to deny the witch test. Ooh, which gets seven. Eight. Becomes no. eight, which is not enough to exceed. I can't re-roll that, can I? Uh, you can spend a CP to re-roll deny the witch test, actually. Yeah, I think that's one of the things it, you can... Is it uh, one of the dice or both the dice? Ah, uh, it's both of them. Yeah. I'll give it a try. Give it a try, speed CP. No, Oops, gets six. Seven. That spends a CP, does not go off. So, the Cybot does go off and targets into Judge Judicia. Uh, he is unobscured from the Aspiring Sorcerer from there, deals a mortal wound. So, four up to kill. I'm gonna burn my last CP to attempt to reroll that. I need him gone. He's gone. Away goes Judge Judy, CR. <laughs> Blasted back into the warp. Uh, your first psychic. Okay, my first psychic will be this dude going into the demon. Okie dokie. So, attempting cybolt. Needing four. four because Grey Knights are better at it. Goes off with six. I'll attempt Automatic D3 as well. I will attempt so. to deny the witch. Uh, how much did you get for that? Uh, six. Uh, six, yeah. Yep. Seven. So, I need plus one. Ah, yeah, plus one to your test. So, I need eight to deny it. Seven. Does not get. So, yeah, Cybolt goes directly into it. Uh, uh, so, D3. So D3 mortal wounds. Three mortal wounds. So, uh, mortal wounds are done individually. Are they? Mortal. Well, mortal. Oh, yeah. So, it's not sequential, it's just the one that goes through is my point. It's one damage. Three attacks of one damage. Yep, so the Twist Braid is receiving cover from the crate from the Cybolt. Needs a, on a five or more, he's dead. No, on a three, he gets a flesh wound. So the side cannon is side bolting my aspiring sorcerer, needing a four to go off. Getting a five. Uh, I'm out to deny the witch. Uh, I am behind cover as well, so single dice on a five to kill. No. So you both get flesh wounds, do you? I do get flesh wounds. Two successful side bolts from the Grey Knights. One flesh wound on the aspiring sorcerer, one on the twist rate, but the leader for the Grey Knights has been slain. Going into shooting phase then. So, it is going to be a very short uh, shooting phase for the Thousand Suns, because all these guys are on the bridge with no target, and the Aspiring Sorcerer only has a bolt pistol. So, he will fire said bolt pistol uh, into... Uh, hmm. Let's fire into the guy with the Falchion, just because he's uh, unobscured. So, hitting on a 3-up, because no such thing as long range, thanks to Pariah. Hits, bolt pistol, strength 4, toughness 4, wins on a 4 wall. Does as an AP minus two for the Inferno Bot Pistol. That's a two, that's a fail. Um, yeah, we're re-roll. Still, I'll re-roll. Rerolling. Yeah, he's fine. Actually, is it? AP minus two, you need a five. Yeah. Yeah, no, goes through the armor. So in the open then, four up to kill. That's a kill. Don't Away be... goes the staff from the Inferno Bot Pistol. Killed me twice in the same game. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He's on a roll. Uh, Grey Knight shooting. Alright, I'm going to the Spiring Sorcerer. Into the Spiring Sorcerer from the Psy Cannon. Okay, four uh, threes. Four shots hit on three with the Psy Cannon. Four. All hits. Strength. strength is seven. So, four hits against the Spiring Sorcerer. Strength seven, toughness four, wins on threes. Uh, 
two of them. AP? Minus one. Minus one. So, uh, does not have all his dust because he's a squishy person inside, so he just gets four Parma saves. Passes them both. He's loving it. Uh, yeah, the Flamer is in range of the Twist Break, so 2d6 with the highest hits. Five hits. Toughness one, Twist Break. Uh, this is an incinerator, strength five. Strength six. Strength six, uh, wood wound on threes. So two wounds. Yep, yeah. six at the back, two wounds. So it uh, doesn't matter with the AP, I just get two five up invulnerable saves. Makes one, fails the other. One so damage. One, uh, one damage, but I am once injured. He's demo. And he's, uh, that accounted for, uh, uh, for you to wounds. Did you get two? I think he did, doesn't matter, still made it through and it's only one damage. Falls to kill. Nope. Another flesh wound. Weiss flesh wounded for the twist brain. So, end of shooting for turn one then. Uh, the Inferno bolt pistol pinged off one of the staff wielders down here, uh, but the twist brain has eaten a bunch of flame from the incinerator. Going into fight phase then. Uh, two hammers to the face, hits yep. on threes, mm -hmm. yep. twos. twos. Uh, wouldn't he have minus one anyway for a third? Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, minus one plus yeah. one. So, hitting twos, uh, no, sorry, threes with Thunder Hammer. So, one hit, strength lots, I imagine. So, probably wound on a two. It's, uh, eight. Strength eight, toughness four, wounds on a two. Does. AP? Uh, minus three. Minus three AP. So, goes on to the five up invulnerable save. Zeech protects. Yes, invulnerable save. So, one attack hits on a three. One attack from the staff hits on a three. Does not. Uh, slap back, I guess, from the rubric. Uh, let's put it on the guy in the hammer. Why not? Hits on a three. Does. Wounds on a four. Does regular armor save a three up. Yeah, he's fine. So then, very lackluster fight phase all around. Uh, the invulnerable save stopped the thumb and the hammer from completely squishing the rubric, but uh, nothing else really happened then. So, going into morale and then scoring. Okay, for the morale phase then, no break tests needed for either side yet, even though they've both got uh, either two dead or two injured, it's not enough to take them over the 50-50 halfway point. Uh, the twist phrase leadership is seven, so there's no dead, so he can't fail. Same for the aspiring sorcerer who has a leadership of eight. Going into scoring then. Currently, nobody's scoring anything really because you count the score at the end of the match even though the Thousand Suns are technically in control of three crates, the score is still nil-nil. So, uh, initiative then for turn two. Grey Knights get six. Thousand Suns get eight. Initiative Thousand Suns. So, as part of the move, the Aspiring Sorcerer is declaring a charge against the side Cannon, needing eight to get into the charge. But first, Overwatch shots from the side Cannon, hitting sixes. No. No. 2 to 6 charge from the Aspiring Sorcerer, needing 8. <coughs> 4. Uh, mm. Not quite there. Uh, let's go hide behind one of those escape pods, shall we? So, summarising movement for the Thousand Suns then. Uh, the Demolition Specialist has moved up and opened the door, clearing the way for the regular Rubik to walk 6 with his crate. And even though they can move 12, the Zangor Shaman can only move 6 when he's dragging a crate, so he's only managed to move 2 there. But the Twist Bray has managed to get one of the crates back into the starting area, so that is currently mine. Grey Knight movement then. So, Grey Knight's movement then. Bearing in mind that the Hammer and the Staff had to fall back out of combat, they have both moved up there, trying to get closer to the Thousand Suns deployment area. The Incinerator has readied up, uh, staring down the opposite Demolition Specialist with his Flamer. The side cannon has fallen back into the deployment zone, dragging the crate with them to secure that for the Grey Knights. And I believe that is all the movement for them. So, going into psychic phase then for turn two. First of the psychic then, the aspiring sorcerer is going to try and cybolt the guy that's advancing with the hammer. So, needing a five for it to go off. Goes off with seven. Deny. Not oh, which attempt. Nice. Getting eight, denied. Nine. Deny, deny, deny. Does not go off. And retaliation, he looks at you and slaps you in the face with... Does not much care for it. The hammer tries to sidebolt back. Needing four. Goes yes. off with seven. seven. My deny Plus attempt. one equals eight. I need a nine. Come on, Zinch. Nine. Yes. Zinch loves him some nines. Um, the grenade with the warding staff is attempting to sidebolt this rubric marine here with the warp flamer. 
uh, succeeds with eight. Now I think you need to see the casting model in order to deny the witch. So I'm not sure I yeah. can deny it with my other model. So successfully goes off. Uh, he is unobscured from you, so dies on a four up. Also, you already used that guy. Yeah, yeah. I've already used my uh, denied so, witch, so this guy dies on a four up. Dead. So I'm going to spend both CP for immovable automaton on this guy. So away goes all my CP for this turn, and on a four up, instead of dying, he just gets a flesh wound. No, he's dead. <laughs> away he goes. It is the worst version of uh, Death Denied. Yep. Yes, it doesn't work half the time. But yeah, uh, that's Psychic done. So, summarising. Cybots traded back and forth between the Hammer and the Aspiring Sorcerer. Nothing much came of it though, but the Grey Knight with the Swording Staff has completely obliterated one of the Thousand Suns Rubric Marines. Going into shooting then for turn two. And first shot is for ready models, because the Grey Knights do have a readied with the Incinerator. Firing into that one, I'm assuming? Yep. yep. Six pick the highest hits. Three. Three. What strength six, six I think, I think it was for the incinerator. Wounding on threes. Uh, incinerator strength six. Yep, wounding on threes for the incinerator. One AP. Uh, minus one. And is it one damage? Yep. It is. So all his dust kicks in, has a two armor save, minus one becomes three. Three up armor. And have we used all my CP, so that goes through the armor. Uh, Does it kill him? He's more than an inch beyond the obscuring cover, so forced to kill. No. I will reroll because I ain't got much to do. Spending the reroll for the turn. <laughs> Still no. It goes off from the incinerator and inflicts a flesh wound upon the rubric. Uh, ooh, do I retaliate now? No. Let's instead get the aspiring sorcerer with his bolt pistol to fire into this guy, who I believe is unobscured from him. Could you just confirm that for yes. me? Yep. So hits on a three then because long range isn't a thing thanks to Pariah. Hits, uh, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds on a 4. Does, AP minus 2 from the Inferno, bolt pistol. No, uh, 1 damage, he's in the open, 4 up to kill. Nope, he just gets a flesh wound. Flesh wound on the combat specialist. Uh, your next shot. It's going to be the side cannon. Yep. It's going to be the Zango. Side cannon <laughs> to the twist bray, no such thing as long range. Uh, is obscure from the crate. 4s. Uh, two hits. Yep. Two hits onto the twist break from the Psy Cannon. Strength seven, toughness four, wins on threes. Single. Uh, just a single five up, invulnerable save for the twist break. Zinch does not protect this time. Twice flesh wounded, uh, but behind cover, so would kill on a three up. Ooh. <laughs> yes, because fours usually five for cover, minus two becomes threes. Yes, two does not go off. He gets another flesh wound. Even if he is flesh wounded again, that guy is dead. <laughs> but he's still kicking for now. Uh, my next shot. Let's fire the Demotion's Walt Flamer back into the one who's already burned him. 2d6 hits, pick the highest. Four. So, strength four versus toughness four. We're going to go on fours. Uh, three AP minus twos. Fives. Nope. Nope, uh, it's all one damage though, and he's more than an inch beyond the thing obscuring him, so kills on a four up. Dead. Away goes the incinerator. So, end of shooting phase then. So, the hammer has suffered a flesh wound from the inferno bolt pistol. The twist bray has got another flesh wound from the side cannon. One more and he's dead regardless. The demolitions rubik suffered a flesh wound but killed the offending model in retaliation. So, going into fights then, and nobody's in melee range. So straight to uh, morale then, because we will have to tally this up, because we've both suffered a lot of flesh wounds and deaths. Okay then, so both teams are needing a break test at this point. Uh, what's the highest leadership for the Grey Knights? Seven. So, trying to get under seven. Yep, the Grey Knights are fine as a team. Uh, highest leadership for the Thousand Suns. I know the Aspiring Sorcerer has a leadership of 8. Does the Shaman have any better? He does not, also 8. So, needing uh, 8 or under. This is the one time we don't want the holy 9 number of Zinch. Yeah, Zinch is listening. We only get 6, they are fine. But there's a lot of individual nerve tests to take. And it's needing 4 guy. or less, also get a reroll. But... Uh, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's good. So, nerf for myself, this is going to be a problem. Uh, so, Thousand Sorcerer, uh, the Aspiring Sorcerer has a leadership of 8, minus 1 for the dead guy, he can't fail. 
Twist Bray has a leadership of seven. Yep, seven, minus one for the dead guy, cannot fail on a d6. The rubric, I don't think they have that much. No, also seven. So yes, all fine here. The Grey Knight has passed his morale test, everyone else doesn't need to take one. So scoring then, currently tied up because there is a single stasis crate in each of the deployment zones. So we're currently going three points apiece as we move into turn three. 2d6 initiative for turn three. Thousand and Sons get three. Grey Knights get ten. Advantage Grey Knights as we go into turn three. No charge, might as well. Yeah, I've got nothing to overwatch with. Oh wait, you boy. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. In he goes. Boop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I mean, it is blocking the cover, so yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Grey Knight is attempting to charge both this rubric and the Demolition Specialist. So I'll pay one CP uh, for point blank Overwatch if we get it. So make your charge attempt first, and then we'll see if we need to Overwatch. What's that? Uh, that is looking like six. And that's four. probably four. So where are you going? Well, actually, roll it first and yeah. see where you go. Yeah, Either. Where do you want to go? I'm going this way around to block the door. Okay, so point blank overwatching from this rubric into him. 2d6 auto hits. Pick the highest. Two hits. Strength 4, toughest 4, wins on 4s. Single, minus 2 for the armor save. Needing a 5. Gets it with a 6. He's fine. Back In he goes. Guy, so not it back. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Very much safe. Oh, and that's annoying because that's blocking my escape route to the deployment zone, so I can't just drain this crate straight in there. That is um, good thinking. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Uh... Mm. So, some racing movement then for turn three of the Grey Knights. So, this one has braved a gout of flame to charge into the Rubric Marine and blocking the escape of these two crates into the deployment zone. Uh, the combat guy with the hammer has successfully charged the Twist Bray in the deployment zone for wrestling control of that crate. And the side cannon has stepped up behind there, leaving the crate in the deployment zone. So, movement then for the Thousand Suns. So, Thousand Suns movement for turn three then. The aspiring sorcerer has stepped back from the escape pod to the pipe, so he can definitely make sure his cyborg goes off against the guy with the combat hammer. The rubric here has advanced 11 to get in range of the crate and can potentially flame the side cannon from behind. Whereas the Zangor Shaman has charged into the melee there, abandoning his crate, hopefully trying to kill that Grey Knight off. So, let's find out who does what as we go into the Psychic phase, and it is the Grey Knight's advantage, they get to go first. So, the combat with the hammer is going into the Zangor with his Cybolt, Need needing four. four. Gets Goes nine. off with eight, yeah, and becomes nine because of the Grey Knights. I am not going to attempt to deny that. He is a demon. He is. He dies. <laughs> well, yeah, he's dead, isn't he? Yeah, because he can't. Yeah, because I can't save it. Even if he gets another mortal wound, he's dead. Uh, yeah, twist has gone. <laughs> Straight off. Oh, my first cyborg then. Uh, I am going to put it from the shaman into that grey knight there. So he's a psychic, so plus one to his psychic test. So he needs four. Gets seven. You're going to attempt to deny. Because you only got one. So attempting to deny. Snake Eyes does not deny. I will use my one CP. Rerolling. Yes, yes. Eight, eight, eight becomes nine. nine. Yep, does successfully deny the, psych, the fire bolt. Yeah, that Grey Knight is still alive. Uh, you're next. I'm going to try to injure your big dude. Okay, so the Grey Knight is attempting to cyborg back into the Zangor Shaman. Needing four. Needing four. Getting ten. ten. Uh, I'll use my deny the witch attempt. Nope. And that's a D three. D three. So how much damage? Three. three. So, so that puts this one. guy down to one wound. Oh dear. Uh, yes, please. Not good. So my final side bolt then is going from the aspiring sorcerer into the guy with the combat hammer, needing five to succeed. Ooh, gets eleven. That goes for D3, but it's one wound anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you've used your deny. He's once flesh wounded and in the open to him. Kills on a three. He did. Away goes the combat specialist. So, psychic phase then. Um, the Grey Knight with the combat specialist managed to kill off the twist spray, but was immediately removed from the board by the aspiring sorcerer. So, a lot of cybots going off here. The shaman attempted, but was denied by the Grey Knight, who immediately flicked three damage back onto the Shaman, so he only has one wound remaining. 
going into shooting then. Uh, Grey Knight's initiative. Yep, side cannons firing into the warp flamer. Four shots. Union freeze. Two hits. Uh, strength seven, toughness four, wins on threes. One. One. AP minus one, was it? Yep. One damage? Yep. Okay, so all his dust gives it a two up armor save. Minus one is three. Three up armor save. Loves it. Uh, my shot then. Flamer back. Might as well. 2d6, pick the highest hits. Ooh, that's off the table. Four. I'm gonna rub these again. So, four, wounding on fours, toughness four, strength four. Ooh, only one. So, one, AP minus two. Five up. Nope. No. Oh, and he's unobscured. Four up to kill. That's a kill. Away goes the side cannon. So, side cannon unsuccessfully managed to shoot down the rubric, not inflicting any damage because of the all is dust, and he immediately got immolated back by the warp flamer. Not much else for everyone to go on because everybody is dead or in combat. So, fight phase, and it's all going off down here. Grey Knight, uh, you did have a charge out and it's your initiative. So, I'm going for the big dude. Trying to polish off the shaman. Three. free. Hits on a three. Strength. So, toughness of four on the shaman. Strength six. six. Wound on a three. Yep. Does wound. Minus one. Minus one on the AP. I get my five up in vulnerable save. Uh, yep. So, five up in vulnerable for the shaman. Yes. He's loving it. These dice should let me, man. Now that I'm not using my garbage dice and I'm using yours, it's actually working out. Yep, and that's your slaps. So, Sharon gets to fight back. He has three attacks, hitting on threes. So, let's see what we get with that. Uh, two of them. Strength is four, but the staff is plus two. So, strength six, wounds on threes. Single for an AP minus one D3 damage. He has a... Uh... Five up and an invol of five. Oh, it's only AP minus one, so it'd be a four up oh, because four. of your regular armor. Yeah, he's fine. Grey Knight is fine. Uh, then the slap from the rubric there just gets one attack, hits on a three. Does, wins on a four. Does not. Uh, do you know what? It's only one CP left in the phase. Why not? Wins on a four. Yes. Three up arm save for the Grey Knight. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Okay, so, not a whole lot with the fight phase. Some heavy blows were traded, but nothing seemed to land. So, going into morale then, and both teams do need to still take their break tests. I mean, he's only a seven. So, he needs a seven on the Grey Knight. Three, uh, ooh, no, no. eight. So, the one lone Grey Knight has broken. Uh, let's see if the Thousand Sons do the same. Their highest leadership is eight. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, two dead. Two flesh wound though, so his leadership would go down to six, can't fail. His will go down to five on a six, he falls over. No, nope, he's fine. And these two aren't flesh wounded, and the team's not broke. So, one or two. Yeah, he's <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, the Grey Knight is still fine. He may have broken, but he's still wants in the fight. But uh, everybody else is fine with the morale test. So, uh, scoring then. Both these crates are currently in transit. Once a piece is still in, even though the rubric is next to it, it's still in your deployment zone, so it's not counted as mine yet. So turn four then, uh, potentially the final turn, 2d6. Six for the Thousand Suns, six for the Grey Knights, re-roll. 10 for the Thousand Suns, 11 for the Grey Knights. Grey Knight initiative. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay in the fight. Yeah, can appreciate that. Uh, Thousand Suns movement then. Uh, this rubric can only move five because he's a, he's a bit slow and achy in his old bones. So he moves five up to there and drags that crate with him. And the aspiring sorcerer will advance. Six plus six, ooh, 12. Okay, so movement phase for turn four then. The Grey Knight has remained locked in combat with the Zangor Shaman. Uh, this rubric has just moved the crate out of the Grey Knight deployment zone. The Sorcerer advanced to full 12 and is in line of sight of the Grey Knight, and the Rubric has fallen back out of combat into both of those crates. Psychic phase then, Grey Knight Initiative, where's your Cybot going? Well, it's going to the big dude. Into the Shaman, needing some fours. Gets Goes seven. off with eight, nine. becomes nine, so attempting to deny, I need a ten. Yes. Getting eight. That's D3 automatic. Off. D3 automatic. One, One. it's enough. enough to put him onto flesh wounds though. Uh, in the open, two on a four, the shaman's dead. I will use my last three roll. <laughs> Using the one CP for three roll. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> this is my great night. <laughs> fells the demonic shaman. Gone. Right, uh, Metallic with two is Cybolt then. Um, Spying source to the Grey Knight needs a five. Goes off with ten. Deny. Gets Doesn't nine. deny hard enough with nine. So, uh, unobscured, so on a four, he dies. Uh, he does not. I'll use one of my CP to reroll. Still doesn't die. He's still in the fight, so he just gets himself a flesh wound. So then, uh, for the end of the psychic phase then, the Grey Knight has slew the demon. Uh, he's, he's on his own, he's hurting, but he has managed to kill it. He suffered a cyborg from the aspiring sorcerer for his troubles, but he is still in this fight. As we're going to the shooting phase then, and it is Grey Knight's initiative. Yes. So four shots. Two on each. Might as well. Alright, so two, on two on the flamer. Two on the flamer. One hit, because he's behind cover with the crate. So Toughness four, wounds four. four. Yeah. Does AP? Zero. Uh, so, all is dust, to a palmer save. Yep. And two into the Two into the sorcerer. Both miss. Uh, return in the shots. He can't fire because he fell back out of combat. Bolt pistol. Yes, he advanced. He can't fire either. And this flamer has no targets whatsoever. So, end of shooting phase then. Tried to fire the storm bolter. Pinged off the armor. Missed the target completely. He advanced and can't fire. He fell back from combat. And he can't see anything. Goes to fight phase, nobody's in fighting range. Goes to morale then. Uh, so I need to see if I break again still. So uh, high surviving leadership is still currently eight. So anything but nine or more. Snake eyes, we're still in the fight. Break, uh, nerves. Uh, yep, individual nerve. So two or one, reroll. Yes. Oh, he gets the one, the Grey Knight still wants it. He's still up for this fight. Uh, so, Thousand Suns then, minus three for the dead guys. So, on a six, he falls over. Nope, he's fine. And on a five, up, oh, that guy falls over. The Rubik falls over. I have a CP left. Can't no, I can't. I Yeah, no, I can't. I already rolled it. So, yeah, yeah can't yeah. spend for in brave. I can't spend for insane brave because I already rolled it. That Rubik falls over and is not contesting that objective while he's on the ground. Ooh, okay. So, scoring then. Um, currently, Thousand Suns control one, two, three crates. Doesn't control that. Grey Knights control nil. So, uh, this could be potentially the last turn. So, on a three up, the game continues. The game continues. Come on, lowly Grey Knight. Can he do it? Can he crawl it back? So, uh, roll initiative then for turn five. Uh, four for the Thousand Suns, six for the Grey Knights. Come on, Grey Knight, can he do it? It's Grey Knight initiative, it's movement phase, what's he doing? But the problem is, you've got a flamer. I do. Okay, so the Grey Knight's just stepped up, he is not charged, he just moved normally. Uh, these two are both going to ready up, I think. And he's on the floor and can't do anything. So, Psychic Fun Times, it's the Grey Knight's initiative. Cybolt, which one? Of course, it's the closest, so. Uh, yes, has to be the closest, going into the Warp Flamer. Uh, gets seven, becomes eight because the Grey Knights. I'll attempt to deny needing a nine. Come on, blessed Zinch. Nine. Ten. That'll do. That'll do me fine. Denied. Uh, the Spying Sorcerer will attempt to cyborg back, needing a five. Getting six. Attempting to deny. Need six. Denies hard. No cybolts for anybody. A grand whole load of nothing with the cybolts. Uh, locked in the mental mindscape that's going off here, they both denied their abilities. Shooting then, and both Thousand Suns models are ready. So let's fire off the uh, bolt pistol first. You are uncovered behind that crate. Hits on a four. Does wounds on a four. Also does AP minus two. Five apartment. Fails. He's once flesh wounded, but behind the crate. Four up to kill. Oops, oh, spending for the reroll. No. Nope. nope. Still does not. So four up to kill. Dead. I think I'll concede. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be time to give it up, yes. <laughs> the last Grey Knight is scoured from the ship. The aspiring sorcerer collects his remaining two rubrics. The demon he summoned was useful but ultimately did not survive, but he retains control of the psychers in the stasis crypt and is able to guide the shuttle off to the plant of the sorcerers. Victory to the Thousand Suns. Very good game. So, thoughts on that then? Um, holy Christ, Grey Knights need two wounds. 
<laughs> also, I should have brought the Force Swords or something. Yeah. Because they would have been better against your dust. And uh, the always dust, yeah, with the extra... The extra damage or extra AP? Um, yeah, either or would have helped, I suppose. Well, no, because of the AP, because if it's minus one, then you get your... Sh True, but five. if you get two damage, then the minus one AP for the always dust is ignored. Like, it's only effective against damage one weapons. So, a lot of Cybolts thrown around. Uh, I think that my placement with the Shaman... Yeah, it was a good idea to go for the furthest crate and try and drag it back. But, yeah, once you saw it, like, D3 wings against the Demon? Damn! Like, yeah, that, that was lethal. Absolutely smashed him. Same with the... Um, Psychos as well. The one up there, yeah. Very, very nasty. So, yeah, I, we just need... And, I, I, do you know what? I don't think Thousand Sons desperately need those two wounds. It'll help, sure, but... I think the whole, the new rules of, like, hitting on threes really diminishes the Grey Knights, because if everyone's hitting them on threes, mm -hmm. it basically, like, they've not got much yeah. to save, save against. The Grey, the Grey Knights don't have an invulnerable no. standard either, do they? No. Like, that is the problem. Like, in Marine to Marine, the Thousand Sons are better. Yeah. Like, uh, the Grey Knights may have better melee weapon options, which these don't. Yeah. But, um, get there first. <laughs> yeah, and because there's no vulnerable save, those Grey Knights desperately need that second wound. No, they really do. But, oh my god, Thousand Suns are going to be lethal if they get a second one. Can you imagine having to get past a two up armor save potentially and two wounds? That's going to be very nasty. But yes, a very brutal kill team matchup there. Victory to the Thousand Suns. Thank you very much for joining us on this kill team battle report, and we shall see you in another one.